this video, we're going to talk about if it's a good idea to disable your active fuel management via software without installing a delete kit. Coming right up. So, is it a good idea to disable your active fuel management displacement on demand with software without installing a delete kit? So this question came up because I had the opportunity to buy an LH6 on eBay for an upcoming project. Now, as you probably know, the LH6 is a fourth generation engine and therefore comes with active fuel management, also known as displacement on demand. Just for review, the active fuel management is a fuel savings mechanism by which the engine automatically shuts off four of the cylinders during light loads of the engine, like when you let off the gas or your constant speed on the freeway. It does this by shutting off the lifter functions for that particular cylinder via high sorcery using electronic solenoids, oil pressure, plungers, and springs. The active fuel management engines are primarily found in truck and SUV 5.3 and 6.0 liter applications. By the way, active fuel management is the new updated woke term for displacement on demand. Now this feature has proven to be a common point of failure in these engines. Uh, just do a search of YouTube of AFM or DOD and you're going to find a lot of frustrated uh, face, faces. What happens is when the computer wants to shut off the active fuel management, thereby returning the engine back to its mighty V8, the spring on the lifter fails to expand and then the lifter is not riding on the cam. Instead, the lobe of the cam is now tapping on the lifter or maybe the rod is tapping on the rocker arm, I don't know, but it's bad. Uh, but it definitely has a distinctive tapping noise. So before I was going to buy the LH6 on eBay, I started researching how to disable the active fuel management. And where do we go to research, you know, all things automotive, you know, YouTube, of course. Uh, so I did a quick search of disable or delete active fuel management. And it gave me mostly guys opening up their engines and installing a delete kit to remove the active fuel management feature from their engines. But if I buy an engine, I don't necessarily want to open it up and, and do open heart surgery. I just want to know if I just disable it via software, HP tuners, uh, is that good enough? But I didn't find a lot of information on that. Um, now this guy on here, uh, he's got a great video, video on how many miles you would need to drive with the active fuel management in place and working in order to save enough gas to offset the cost of opening up the engine and installing the active fuel management delete kit, which is a moot point because if the active fuel management is eventually going to fail, you won't have the opportunity to drive the vehicle that long. By the way, it's nearly, he calculated that it's nearly 300,000 miles. Uh, one thing I did learn is that once you have a lifter problem caused by the active fuel management failing, you definitely then need to open up the engine and remove the active fuel management feature and then also use the software to remove the feature uh, from the computer. Now I know there's a few videos out there with guys, they pump oil in this and they tap this and they get the spring back. Uh, they get the lifter back, but r really how long is that going to last? It's probably going to, you know, a different lifter is going to fail. So that got me wondering that if I get an engine that does have active fuel management and does not yet have a lifter problem, can I simply disable the active fuel management feature using software and not open up the engine to install the delete kit? So I came across uh, this video. This, this guy shows you how to disable the active fuel management feature using software and does not open his engine. He then demonstrates that in fact, the feature is disabled by driving the vehicle and noticing how the engine does not display the little V4 symbol on the dash on the under light loads on the engine. That's all fine and good, but he does not talk about if it's a good idea to do this. 
Now, uh, Giovanni Dante Greco, I think, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, that right, and I'm sorry if I'm not. Now, he's a great resource for all things LS swap. Uh, he has a video on installing a delete kit and does mention that you can simply disable the feature using software. But since, since he already has a lifter problem, he has to install the delete kit. No mention if it's a good idea to simply disable it using the software. I posed the question to JR of, of the Driveway Engineer, also a great uh, channel for all things LS. I wrote in a comment on one of his videos talking about the basics of using HB tuners. I said, can I delete the DOD in an LH6 using software only? Good idea. Or do I need to also open up the motor and do a delete kit as well? Thank you, great channel. Now he stated, you can just turn it off in HB tuners. No need to open up the engine unless a lifter has already failed. But, does, but he doesn't mention if it's a good idea or not in the, lo in the long run. So I turned to some books that I have on LS engines. Of the books that do mention active fuel management, here's what they say. First is swap LS engines into Chevelle's and GMA bodies, 1964 to 1972 by Jefferson Bryant. Here it mentions on page seven that with the introduction of the Gen 4 engine in 2005, the evolution in pushrod engine technology took another step forward. Based on Gen 3 architecture, these new engines took advantage of displacement on demand technology which General Motors called active fuel management. And then a brief explanation of what it does and how it saves fuel. No mention of disabling or removing the feature. The second book I reference is How to Build and Modify GMLS Series Engines by Joseph Potok. Hopefully I pronounced that right. On page 11, he says that the 6.0 liter LS2 was the first to receive the active fuel management and displacement on demand block machining provisions. But the LS2 itself does not actually use the DOD feature. No mention of leaving the DOD feature and simply disabling it with software. As this book deals with building and modifying LS engine, it talks about assembling the engine with or without the DOD feature. No mention of leaving the DOD feature in the engine and simply disabling it with software. The third book I referenced is GMLS Series Engines, The Complete Swap Manual, also by Joseph Potok. In it, on page 7, he says that if you are going to use a Gen 3 computer on an engine that has active fuel management, you will need to mechanically disable it by replacing the active fuel management lifters. Further, on page 171, the author states that engines that use both systems, active fuel management and variable valve timing, such as the fifth generation Camaro L99 engine, these engines can be reverted back to conventional LS configuration by using non-variable valve timing active fuel management engine hardware. And then, once again, no mention of leaving the DOD feature in the engine and simply disabling it with software. Obviously, if you're going to open an engine for performance, you're going to delete it. The fourth book I referenced is Chevy LS Engine Conversion Handbook by Sean Henderson. Here, I did find some guidance. On page 193, he states, for swaps that will eliminate displacement on demand, it is best to replace the DOD lifters and valley tray to avoid a catastrophic engine failure after the DOD program has been removed from the ECM, the computer. So it seems, uh, that you're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't. If you're driving a vehicle that has active fuel management and you disable it with software only, you might suffer a catastrophic engine failure after the DOD program has been removed from the computer. On the other hand, if you leave the active fuel management enabled, seems to me that eventually you're going to have a lifter problem necessitating open heart surgery on the engine anyway. 
Now, I should mention, uh, there are Gen 4 books that I only have samples for that may go into more detail. But these books deal with building more horsepower and upgrades. So they may assume you're going to install a delete kit anyway. But looking at the table of contents of these books, I don't see anything specific on Active Fuel Management DOD, but it may be buried somewhere in there. Um, at any rate, all the videos that I reference uh, are linked below, as well as the books. Hopefully this helps. I don't know if I shed any more light, but thanks for watching.